color at Niagara Falls. From the fabulous new International Convention Center, 51 United States Beauty. In the Miss USA Beauty Pageant. Tonight, the judges will choose Miss USA of 1974, the one beautiful girl who will represent the United States in the pageant that chooses the most beautiful girl on Earth, Miss Universe. And now, here from all 50 states in the District of Columbia are the most beautiful girls in the USA. Thank you. Thank you. USA Beauty Pageant with your television hostess, the beautiful Miss Helen O'Connell. And your host, one of television's most popular personalities, Mr. Bob Barker. The Miss USA Beauty Pageant is brought to you by Came, a beautiful complexion, and by Head and Shoulders, the shampoo that's strong and gentle, and by Crest, the cavity fighter. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your host, Mr. Bob Barker. I think I'll become a contestant. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this 23rd annual Miss USA beauty pageant. The first to come from our beautiful new home here in the brand new Niagara Falls Convention Center. Since the falls are considered one of the natural wonders of the modern world, it seems appropriate that 51 beautiful young lady natural wonders should assemble here to compete for the Miss USA title. Now, the judges here will select one outstanding girl from our 51 beautiful contestants for this unique honor. And that very lucky girl will represent our country in the Miss Universe beauty pageant when it's telecast live this July from Manila, the capital city of the Philippines. Now, before tonight's competition begins, I'd like to present the Miss USA of 1973, 
a very special young lady from Illinois who won her title just a year ago tonight and has proved to be one of the most outstanding Miss USA's in the history of this pageant. That's right, Miss USA of 1973, Amanda Jones. <laughs> And now, now may I present the reigning Miss Universe, a beautiful and charming girl from the Philippines, Miss Universe of 1973, Margarita Moran. Thank you, Miss USA. Thank you, Miss Universe. Now, our 1974 pageant begins with a traditional parade of states. The first step in tonight's final judging and your chance to meet each of these contestants individually. As each delegate comes forward to meet you, she'll turn in her vote for the Miss Amity Award, a trophy that's given to the girl who, in the opinion of her fellow contestants, is the most popular and friendly. Next to the Miss USA crown itself, this is the award that the girls value most because they determine the winner themselves. After the last contestant, Miss Wyoming, has introduced herself, I'll announce the name of the winner of the Miss Amity Award. So, let's meet all 51 delegates in this 23rd annual Miss USA beauty pageant. We present the Parade of States. <laughs> Miss Alabama. Hi, you all. My name is Winnie Lavis. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. Miss Alaska. Hi, I'm Cindy Dickerson, and I'm from Anchorage, Alaska. Miss Arizona. Hello, my name is Carla Peterson, and I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. Miss Arkansas. Good evening, I'm Gina Huddle from Jacksonville, Arkansas. Miss California. Good evening, my name is Gail Andre Carell and I'm from the San Gabriel Valley in California. Miss Colorado. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Connie Larson from the Mile High City of Denver, Colorado. Miss Connecticut. And I'm Valerie Ann Capella from Hartford, Connecticut. Miss Thank Delaware. You. Hi, everyone. I'm Cheryl Fetkiner from Newark, Delaware. Miss District of Columbia. Hi, everybody. Rob Nutterbag, District of Columbia. Miss Florida. Good evening. I'm Cindy Zach from Miami, Florida. Miss Georgia. Hi, I'm Vicki Ross from Water Robins, Georgia. Miss Hawaii. Aloha, Joe Maria Attensmeyer, Kaneohe, Hawaii. Miss Idaho. Good evening, I'm Jan Dowden from Pocatello, Idaho. Miss Illinois. Good evening, I'm Karen Morrison from St. Charles in Decatur, Illinois, the soybean capital of the world. Miss Indiana. Hi, my name is Lisa Gay Childress, and I'm from Spencer, Indiana. Miss Iowa. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Susan Thompson from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Miss Kansas. Hello, I'm Lorraine Breckenridge from Wichita, Kansas. Miss Kentucky, winner of the Best State Costume Award. Hello, everyone. I'm Charles C. Julick from Williamstown, Kentucky. Miss Louisiana. Hello, my name is Karen Hoff, and I'm from Bossier, Shreveport, Louisiana. Miss Maine. Good evening. I'm Rebecca Titcomb of Holton, Maine. Miss Maryland. Good evening to you. I'm Mary Jo Rupert from College Park, Maryland. Miss Massachusetts. Hello, everybody. I'm Ethelene Hicks from Roxbury, Massachusetts. Miss Michigan. Hi, I'm Patty Loftus from the TD in Detroit, Michigan. Miss Minnesota. Hello, I'm Gail.
Gail Johnson from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Miss Mississippi! Hi, my name is Denise Clark from Jackson, Mississippi. Miss Missouri! Hello, Tweety McElveen from the Show Me State, Columbia, Missouri. Miss Montana! Greetings from the land of shiny mountains. I'm Carol Alsop from Billings, Montana. Miss Nebraska! Hi, I'm Mary Wolf from Omaha, Nebraska. Miss Nevada! Hi, I'm Linda Dryden from the Silver City of Las Vegas, Nevada. Miss New Hampshire! Good evening, everyone. I'm June Chesky, and I'm from Exeter, New Hampshire. Miss New Jersey! Hi, I'm Pat Sims from Jackson Township, New Jersey. Miss New Mexico! Buenas noches from the land of enchantment. I'm Jan Nielsen from Los Alamos. Miss New York, winner of the Miss Fixable Award. Good evening, everyone. I'm Barbara Cooper from Brooklyn, New York. Miss North Carolina. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Marsha Burton, and I'm from Hickory, North Carolina, the home of the Red Bird. Miss North Dakota. Good evening, everyone. My name is Judy Walsh from Langdon, North Dakota. Miss Ohio. Hi, I'm Kay Phillips from Bedford, Ohio. Miss Oklahoma. Hi, my name's Uganda Willis from Enid, Oklahoma. Miss Oregon. Good evening, I'm Peggy Ann Gerding from Palomath, Oregon. Miss Pennsylvania. Hello, I'm Doris Ann Gutowski from Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. Miss Rhode Island. Hi, I'm Debbie Cerrone from Smithfield, Rhode Island. Miss South Carolina. Greetings, I'm Lynn Hollis from the All-American City of Rock Hill. Miss South Dakota. Good evening, I'm Deborah Ann Brickley from the Black Hills of South Dakota. Miss Tennessee. Greetings from the Volunteer State. I'm Bryn Hendricks and I live in Counts, Tennessee. Miss Texas. Hi, I'm Deborah Cronin from Magday, Texas. Miss Utah. Good evening, everyone here and at home. I'm Helen Peterson from Riverton, Utah. Miss Vermont. Hello, I'm Donna Gordon from Pulteney, Vermont. Miss Virginia. Ahoy, I'm Hazel. Miss Washington. Hello, I'm Cheryl Rutledge from Yakima, Washington. Miss West Virginia. Hi, I'm Kim Newsom from Wheeling, West Virginia. Miss Wisconsin. Good evening, I'm Mary Cook from Wind Lake, Wisconsin. Miss Wyoming. Hi, I'm Debbie Petty from Rollins, Wyoming. And there it is, the Miss USA Parade of States for 1974. Now I am going to announce the name of the winner of the Miss Amity Award for 1974, and that winner is Miss Vermont. Miss Vermont. Right down here, Miss Vermont. Yes, there you are. Miss Vermont is Donna Sue Thornton. Donna, congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. What would you like to say to the girls now that they voted you Miss Amity? Oh, I love them all, and it's been a great week. Thank you, everybody. Well, you're very sweet. Now, Donna Sue, here is your beautiful trophy. You take this home and put this right beside your bed, and you'll never get up grouchy ever, ever again. <laughs> thank you, Miss Amity, and thank you, beauty delegates, for 1974. Good evening, I'm 
Helen O'Connell. And how about this for a spectacular view of the pageant? They built me this special perch so that I can bring you some of the interesting background facts and figures that viewers always want to know about the pageant, and most of all, about the girls themselves. At this moment, or as some might say, at this moment in time, each of the 51 contestants has an equal chance to become Miss USA of 1974. But as the evening progresses, that number will be reduced. First to 12 semi-finalists, then to five finalists, and at that magic moment to one very lucky and very happy young lady. Of course, every girl on stage tonight has won her regional competition and the statewide pageant that brought her to Niagara Falls. So each of them already has made quite a name for herself. And when you stop to think that the odds of becoming Miss USA are many millions to one, well, you can see why all those pretty eyes light up. Now then, Let's go on a camping trip with Head and Shoulders Shampoo. Now, for as long as there have been girls and for as long as there have been swimsuits, the combination of the two has been impossible to beat as an attention getter. In the Miss USA beauty pageant, the 12 girls who are chosen as semi-finalists are judged very carefully in swimsuits. But we also have a swimsuit spectacular that stars all 51 of the contestants. This year, on a rather chilly and very windy day, we used as our background a panoramic view of one of the wonders of the world. Here are the Miss USA delegates in our Niagara Falls swimsuit extravaganza. First, the girls from the central and midwestern states. Miss Illinois, Karen Morrison. Miss Indiana, Lisa Gay Childress. Miss Iowa. Susan Jane Thompson. Miss Kansas, Lorraine Elizabeth Breckenridge. Miss Michigan, Patricia Loftus. Miss Minnesota, Gail Ray Johnson. Miss Missouri, Dorothy Ann McElvee. Miss Nebraska, Mary Elizabeth Wolf. Miss North Dakota, Judith Lynn Waltz. Miss Ohio, Kay Phillips. Miss South Dakota, Deborah Ann Brickley. Miss Wisconsin, Mary Lynn Cook. Now, here are the girls from the Western States. Miss Alaska. Cynthia Diane Dickerson. Miss Arizona. Carlos Peterson. Miss California. Gail Andrea Gorell. Miss Colorado, Connie M. Larson. Miss Idaho, Darla Jan Dowden. Miss Montana, Carol Lynn Olsen. Miss Nevada, Linda Dryden. Miss New Mexico, Janice Lynn Nilsson. Miss Oregon, Peggy Ann Gurdy. Miss Utah, Aileen Peterson. Miss Washington, Cheryl Rutley. Miss Wyoming, Debbie K. Pettit. And one girl from the very, very far west, Miss Hawaii, Joan Marie Ottensmeyer. Now, 
We have the girls from the eastern part of the United States. This is Miss Connecticut. Valerie Ann Capello. Miss Delaware. Cheryl Fetkiner. Miss Maine. Rebecca Titcomb. Miss Maryland, Mary Jo Rupert. Miss Massachusetts, Ethelene Hicks. Miss New Hampshire, June Tedeschi. Miss New Jersey, Tricia Sims. Miss New York, Barbara Cooper. Miss Pennsylvania, Doris Ann Gatulski. Miss Rhode Island, Deborah Ann Cerrone. Miss Vermont, Donna Sue Thornton. Miss Amity. Miss West Virginia, Kim Newsom. And finally, from the South and the Southwest. First, Miss Alabama, Iva Wene Lavis. Miss Arkansas, Gina Kathleen Huddle. Miss District of Columbia, Robin Lee Utterback. Miss Florida, Cynthia Zack. Miss Georgia, Vicki Lynn Ross. Miss Kentucky, Charles E. Ann Julie. Miss Louisiana, Karen Ann Hawk. Miss Mississippi, Ann Denise Clark. Miss North Carolina, Marcia Patrice Burton. Miss Oklahoma, Uganda Willits. Miss South Carolina, Carol Lynn Hollis. Miss Tennessee, Bryn Annette Hendricks. Miss Texas, Deborah Cronin. And Miss Virginia, Hazel Tom. And there are the 51 girls in the swimsuit extravaganza. We'll learn which of these 51 beautiful girls will compete tonight as our 12 semifinalists. They all look very cool and confident, but you know, for most of the contestants, the very thought of becoming a Miss USA semifinalist is an impossible dream. So watch for the various degrees of happy shock when each girl hears her name called. The announcement of the 12 semifinalists is a perfect time for you to start judging the pageant yourselves. So as the girls are called, you jot down their states and names. Throughout the evening, they'll always appear in the same order. First, to be interviewed by Bob Barker, then in the swimsuit competition, and finally in the evening gown. You devise your own scoring system and pick your own five finalists. After all, you know a beautiful girl when you see one, but do you see what the judges see? We'll see after this very good advice from Cam May, the beauty cleanser. first step on the road to becoming Miss USA is being named one of the 12 semifinals. During the week, our judges here have interviewed each of the girls individually, scoring them on poise, personality, and appearance. Then each judge marked his secret ballot, and the votes were tabulated by the accounting firm of Ernst & Ernst. 
Now, the 12 contestants with the highest scores will become our 12 semifinalists, and one of them will go on to become Miss USA. Now, before we announce the names of the semifinalists, let's welcome back all of the Miss USA beauty delegates for 1974. Yes. Now, I would like to point out that the judges mark their ballots individually and secretly, so at this moment, not even the judges themselves know which 12 girls they've chosen collectively. And of course, the contestants do not know who has been selected. Now, the names that I have here on this card are not in alphabetical order, and before we begin, let me wish all of you girls good luck. You're a fine group of young ladies, and it's been a pleasure working with you all week. Here we go, the 12 semifinalists. The first name on this list is Miss District of Columbia. Now, number two among the semifinalists, Miss Illinois. the first two girls who have a chance to become Miss USA. The next girl is Miss Nevada. I just can't resist this. Come on down, Miss California. Our next semi-finalist is Miss Wisconsin! <laughs> Number six, Miss Missouri! we have half of our semi-finalists. Here are the first six. There are six more girls in this group who have a chance to become Miss USA of 1974. Who are they? Well, one of them is Miss South Dakota. And now, to join this very happy little group is Miss Louisiana! Count them up, we have four here, we have four here, we have four more back here. Just four more girls. One of them is Miss North Carolina. Another girl with a chance to be Miss USA is Miss Arizona. Now this leaves us with only two more names on this list. Just two more girls to go, and I think this audience will be happy to know that one is Miss New York. Finalist, the last name on the list, the last girl with a chance to be Miss USA is Miss Florida. And there are our 12 Miss USA semifinalists for 1974.
week has been one of the busiest weeks these young ladies have ever spent. We had a camera crew follow them around just to give you a sample of what they did when they were not rehearsing. Early in the week, the girls starred in a dazzling Miss USA parade that began in Canada and then moved across Rainbow Bridge and through the streets of Niagara Falls. They had to use their most durable smiles because this is the longest parade in North America. At the opening ceremonies the next night, each contestant presented Mayor E. Dent Lackey with a gift from her state. After standing on his feet so long, the mayor was delighted to accept Miss North Carolina's present and put it to immediate use. The girls all bought gifts for their families. That probably means a lot of knickknacks that mom won't know what to do with and ties that dad won't wear, but it's the thought that counts. Beautiful Fort Niagara looks just as it did in the 18th century, and one of the girls, who's a history major, told us it's one of the few places where George Washington never slept. Some of the contestants visited the unique Our Lady of Fatima Shrine. The dome features a map of the continent, and from the top of the outdoor tower, you can see for miles in all directions. At a local ceramics factory, the delegates tried their hands at pottery making and created a whole new line of lopsided vases and tilting coffee cups. Lots of fun, but oh, murder on a manicure. There were parties galore throughout the week, and it was amazing to see girls who'd complained about standing for rehearsals all day dance for hours and love every minute of it. You can see why all the girls will take home so many happy memories of this week of non-stop excitement, really. Now, let us take a few seconds to find out why a lot of mothers depend on time. Now, we've met our 12 semi-finalists, and I'm going to chat with each one of them, beginning with Miss Illinois. Miss Illinois, would you step right down here to me? She's Karen Jean Morrison. She lives in St. Charles. And Karen Jean? Yes? You were the second girl called. Was it a relief to get it over with and get down here? Sure was. <laughs> now, you're one of the two tallest girls in the pageant, aren't you? Right, I'm 5'11". And how tall do you like to have your men? About that high? <laughs> no, around 6'1 to 6'3". I'll send on my tippy toe. All right, here that? we go. <laughs> now, most of the girls here have uh, participated in two or three pageants to become a part of the Miss USA pageant. Right. But you, Karen, I believe had a great deal of trouble just getting to Niagara Falls, uh, right. just ignoring got, pageants. Well, what happened is I got, I was supposed to come into the Buffalo Airport, and my ticket said New York. So I ended up in New York for three-hour layover. So it was all right, though. Everything went fine. What did you do during the three hours? I called a lot of people that I knew in New York. Yes, the bills are just beginning to come in, as a matter of fact. Yeah, but <laughs> that's the way it goes. If you become Miss USA, of course, that will be deducted from your winnings, you okay, understand? Okay, fine, fine. Now, I believe your ambition is to be one of the top ten models. Why the top ten? Because it's better than being the top eleventh. <laughs> well, I find that the top ten to be a lot better. <laughs> yes, and it's nice to be one right, of the top thank twelve, you. isn't it? Right, thank, thank you, Miss Illinois. All right, Miss California. Miss California here is Gail Gorell. She lives in Temple City. She goes to Pasadena City College. And uh, I was looking at your information sheet, that little form you filled out, and I understand your favorite dish is New Zealand pavlova. That's right. What is New Zealand pavlova? Well, it's this very rich and very fattening dessert, and it's made of meringue, and it has piles of whipped cream on top and little kiwi fruits. That's what I had for breakfast, I believe. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> How did you find out about this? Well, two years ago, I toured New Zealand as an ambassador of goodwill for the United States, and I lectured on American life, and it was one of the highlights of my life. It was truly a fantastic experience. Now, when you talked about your uh, jobs in the past, you said that you've done some fashion commentating. Yes, I have. All right. This is an opportunity to let you uh, show your stuff. There's the microphone. Here I am, coming. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this evening we have Mr. Bob Barker. He is modeling this very exquisite tuxedo. Out to kill, wouldn't you say? It looks like it's made of, oh, I'd say mohair or burlap or something like That's that. That's enough. You've gone far enough, Miss California. She also writes jokes. Thank you, Miss California. <laughs> Miss Missouri, would you join me, please? Miss Missouri here is Dorothy Ann McElveen. She's a student at Stevens College in Columbia, and uh, she likes to be called Tweety. Yes. Now, Tweety, uh, you're in school in Missouri, 
And uh, where do your parents live? They live in North Carolina. In North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Now, you had a sister, as I recall, in our pageant a couple of years ago, and I assume she was Miss North Carolina. No, she was Miss Nebraska. Your sister was Miss Nebraska, you're Miss Missouri, and your parents live in North Carolina. Yeah. So why don't you explain that? That will take uh, a few minutes. My father's a retired colonel in the Air Force, and we've lived all over the United States. And he has two beautiful daughters. And I'll bet he's proud of them. Do you have pictures of, uh, does he have pictures of the daughters all over? No. He has a big picture of himself. A big picture of himself? <laughs> now, what? Why does he have a big picture of himself? Because when he was five months old, he won a baby contest and it was the fattest baby around. And he has that on the wall? Yes. I think that's fine, sweetie. I do indeed. But I believe that uh, uh, he probably has one or two of you in his billfold somewhere. Somewhere. Yes, I'll bet he does. Thank you very much, sweetie. Miss South Dakota, would you come out here? Miss South Dakota is Deborah Ann Brickley. She lives in Spearfish. She goes to Black Hill State College. And uh, before I begin talking with you uh, from South Dakota, do you know any television personalities from South Dakota? Just one, and he's one of the best, Bob Barker. <laughs> well, now, you see why she's among the 12 semifinalists. She knows the things she needs to know. But uh, when you were talking about working in your, in your information form, it seems that you've been working in Florida. And since I did live in South Dakota, <laughs> I know that South Dakota is a fur piece from Florida. Tell us about that. How'd you end up down there? Well, it was a couple of years ago when I graduated from high school. My roommate and I, we bought a van, and we toured the United States. And we were in Panama City, Florida, and we just happened to lay our towels in the back door of the Chamber of Commerce, and we were there clad in our little bikinis. And so, uh, someone saw us, and they asked us to please come in. And we were offered a job, and we, were, we stayed there for two weeks, all expenses paid, and we did photography modeling. It was really great. <laughs> I think the moral of that story is if you're a young lady at home there looking for work, and you look like Miss South Dakota, apply in a bikini. It works out, <laughs> right? It did that time. Yes. Thank you, Miss South Dakota. Thank you. Miss North Carolina, would you speak with me now, please? She's Marsha Patrice Burton. She lives in Hickory, and she just graduated from Western Carolina University. And I think we should talk about your family. You have a big one, don't you? I certainly do. I have ten uncles and one aunt on my mother's side. Uh, how many in all? Uh, well, according to our last count, we have about 63 at the family reunion. Do you have family reunions? Oh, definitely. Every Thanksgiving and Christmas. All 63 get together? Yes, we have a good time, too. And they're on your mother's side? Yes. And just think of that. All those in-laws, your father has my sympathy. <laughs> Miss North Carolina, <laughs> Thank does you. he enjoy the family reunions? I think so. You're, you're studying voice, aren't you? Well, I'm a speech and hearing major. And, and what I'm do you, what student do you teaching this quarter, so I'm more or less studying speech. What do you hope to do eventually? I hope to eventually get my master's degree in speech and hearing and work in the public school system. Well, I want to wish you well with that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Miss North Carolina. Now, Miss New York. <laughs> Miss New York is Barbara Cooper. She lives in Brooklyn. She's a Brooklyn College student. And you're a pre-med student, aren't you? That's right, Bob. Now, are there other doctors in your family, Barbara? Yes, doctors seem to run in my family. I have an uncle in California who's a doctor. My brother-in-law is now studying medicine in Mexico. And my mother is now studying to be a nurse. Fine. Are you helping your mother with uh, her studies? I sure am. Are you? You'll end up with the Miss New York State <laughs> Clinic here, won't you? Uh, you also speak Spanish? Si. Yeah, si? Si. Le gusta usted el concurso? Si. Le gusta usted Niagara Falls? Si. Le gusta usted las otras chicas? Si. You speak perfect Spanish? Si. <laughs> Thank you, Miss New York. <laughs> there are our first six semifinalists for 1974. Margarita Moran was crowned Miss Universe. 
Standing in the center of the Herod Atticus Amphitheater, just below the Acropolis, Margarita was transformed from Miss Philippines into Miss Universe. Will you ever forget that moment, Margie? Not if I live to be a thousand years old. Suppose not. It was the most exciting moment of my life. I can believe that. You want, we have some uh, tape of that magic moment. Would you like to take a look at it? Wasn't that a beautiful setting? Uh, do you remember how we all kept praying that it wouldn't rain? This is where my heart almost stopped beating. <laughs> and, oh, I, I don't blame you. Look at that. Don't cry. There you are, Miss Universe. My and this is the year that some girl's going to have that very same thrill in your country. Because we'll all be in Manila on Saturday, July the 20th, for that big event. And I'd like to invite all the viewers to watch so that they can see what a beautiful country I come from. Oh, I'm sure they will. I know that people all over the world will be watching. And thank you very much, Margie. Now, here's a message about beauty of another sort. Shiny dishes washed in lemon fresh joy. We're talking with our Miss USA semifinalists. And the next in line here is Miss Florida. Miss Florida, would you come out here and meet our audience? It's Cynthia Zack. She lives in North Miami. Hi, Cynthia. Hi, how are you? Are you excited about being one of the 12 semifinalists? Yes, yeah, especially being the 12th. <laughs> yes, I saw your face just as I called your name. And <laughs> it was one of great joy. <laughs> I guess so. I was shocked. I've been talking with the girls about some of the jobs they've had. Now, you worked in an ice cream parlor. Yes, I did. It was my first job. What'd you do? Oh, I made the ice cream. Do you have any specialty? Yes, I did a barbershop quartet. It was 10 scoops of ice cream and a lot of syrup and a lot of topping. <laughs> did, uh, how, uh, did you enjoy the shop? Oh, yes, I Wh enjoyed it. Why did you leave? I was getting a little heavy there. You <laughs> I gained eating... some weight? Oh, yes, I was eating half the ice cream. How about... <laughs> I feel the same way about ice cream. Now, I'd like to talk to you about the pageant itself. Maybe you could tell me some of the things that you've learned about other states having met some of the girls here. Of other states? Mm -hmm. Everybody is individualist and they're all beautiful and I love them very much. Everybody has their own special something about it and it, you just gain so much from everybody. Well, you must have something special yourself or you wouldn't be one of our 12 semi-finalists. Thank you, Miss okay. Florida. <laughs> Miss Arizona is Carlos Edith Peterson from Phoenix and she attends Arizona State University and Carlos here was the youngest girl ever to be licensed as a pilot in the state of Arizona, weren't you? Yes, I was. I received my license at age 17, and that's the youngest you're permitted to get it. Uh, how old were you when you first started flying? I was about 15 and a half. I started really rather early because I had about a year extra time to just fool around up in the air. <laughs> yes. Uh, do you, uh, are you mechanically inclined? Do you drive? Oh, yes, I drive. Have you ever had any automobile accidents? <laughs> well, I did have this one little accident. I went through a drive through store, but not in the place where you're supposed to drive through. <laughs> <laughs> what did you drive through? The front window. <laughs> Wouldn't you love to fly with this girl? <laughs> Whose store was it? Oh, it was some relatives of my boyfriend's. Uh, is he still your boyfriend? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> has he ever gone up in an airplane with you? Yes, he has, and he's enjoyed it very much. Yeah. I let him fly it, and I, that's when I got a little nervous when he was flying, but he did quite well. If he puts his arm around you or misbehaves in any way, you just put the thing into a dive, right? No, I press the ejector button. <laughs> <laughs> That's even better. Thank you, Miss Arizona. <laughs> Miss Louisiana, we have a place for you out here. Miss Louisiana is Karen Ann Hoff of Bossier City, and you described yourself as an Air Force brat. I assume your father was in the Air Force. Yes, he has. And you've lived all over the country, and probably in foreign countries, too. Yes, I lived in Japan and in Spain. How long did you live in Japan? For three years. Well, I spoke Spanish with Miss New York. Say something to our audience in Japanese. Ichi ni san shi. What did you say? <laughs> One, two, three, four. <laughs> Obviously, you did not waste your time in Japan. Right. Miss Louisiana, what have you enjoyed most here in Niagara Falls? The people. They're fantastic. They're so warm. This audience is typical of Niagara Falls. Isn't They're it? fantastic. I want you to know you must uh, give her a great deal of respect, too, because, well, you tell them what the governor has bestowed upon you. He appointed me as colonel on his staff. Does that give you any authority? Yes, there are people underneath me, and I haven't really had a chance to use it yet, to put it into work, but I have a couple little sisters and brothers, and 
I'm gonna try it out when I get home. Remember, you're a colonel, not a warden now. Right. All right, thank you, Miss Louisiana. You. And now, Miss Wisconsin. Mary Lynn Cook of Wind Lake. She attends the University of Wisconsin. And what are you studying there, Mary? I'm studying interior design. Just what is interior design? Well, interior design, many people don't know what it is and confuse it with interior decoration. But actually, it's a cross between architecture and interior decoration. Well, now, you know, if you become Miss USA, you will have an apartment in New York City for a year. How would you like to have that design? Well, first of all, they'd probably have to tell me what a budget I would have so I would know how much to spend and how much to uh, extravagant and go on from there. Well, it's one of the nicest Quonset huts that we could possibly get. <laughs> no, I don't think that would do very well. I probably would like, if I couldn't be by a window, I would w like to incorporate some type of nature into the apartment and uh, probably a conversation area for my stereo and television set that I would be receiving. I'm sure it would be very attractive. Thank you, Miss Wisconsin. And Miss Nevada, I'd like to talk with you next. This is Linda Dryden from Las Vegas. She attends the University of Nevada. And your hobby is pottery, isn't it? Yes, it is. Then I will wager that you enjoyed that trip the girls made. Why don't you tell our audience about it? We went to a place in Niagara Falls, which is called a caborium. Ca <laughs> something. You see, like she <laughs> speaks Japanese, too. And what did you do there? We learned how to make... We learned how they make their pottery and their different ceramics and I was fortunate enough there's a ripple through the audience you just figured out what she was trying to say right tell me what is it that's what I thought carborundum that's what it is the carborundum <laughs> you know what it's a museum isn't it I think it does a lot for it when she pronounce it again Carborundum? <laughs> You'll get more people to that museum than ever before. Tell the folks at home where you want them to visit in Niagara Falls. The Carborundum. <laughs> there you go. And you do it. Thank you, Miss Nevada. Miss District of Columbia. This is Robin Lee Utterback. She lives in Vienna, a suburb of Washington, and she has a very interesting job. Now you tell us about that, will you, Robin? I work for Senator Haruska on Capitol Hill. Fine. And what do you do for him? I do odds and ends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> typically, yeah, a very political answer, wasn't it? Now, but that isn't the end of your interesting employment record. Uh, before that, what'd you do? I was a construction worker. <laughs> you, this girl was a hard hat. She really was. Uh, no, she really was. Tell them about your job. Uh, yes, I was a mortar mixer. I had construction boots that were two sizes too big. I wore blue jeans and a t-shirt and a hard hat, and uh, I mixed more, and it was like baking a cake, mixing it up, and the guys couldn't believe it, and you could always recognize me, because I was always the one with the shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Miss District of Columbia. <laughs> oh, they're great girls, aren't they? Thank you all, and now it's time for you girls to get dressed for the swimsuit competition. <laughs> all 12 semifinalists individually. Have you got a hunch about the winner? One thing seems obvious. As nervous as these girls have every right to be, they're send out, sending out very warm and friendly and relaxed vibrations. Of course, as state pageant winners, they've all had a good deal of experience in front of audiences, and they've all been interviewed by reporters many times. But this is the first time you're appearing on network television before I'm told some 47 million viewers. Whew, since that fact doesn't seem to shake them up, I think it's safe to say they've got the situation very much under control. The semifinalists are changing for the swimsuit competition now, and then they'll appear in evening gowns before the five finalists are selected. So, there's a lot more excitement and a lot more beauty to come right after this brief message. Now, while the judges are studying the girls as a group and looking for standout, here's our There's Hope for Everybody department. This year, we asked the girls to bring baby pictures of themselves. We enlarged some of them, and two ended up among the semifinalists. 
There's Miss Gail Andrea Gorell, Miss California. North Carolina, Marsha Burton. So there's hope for everybody. Now I think they're ready for the swimsuit competition, so let's go back to Bob Barker. A little while ago, you saw all 51 of our contestants in their swimsuits, but now our 12 semifinalists are ready to model for the judges here in the very important official swimsuit competition. The judges must now narrow the field down from 12 semi-finalists to only five finalists. So here, in their Catalina swimsuits, are our 12 Miss USA contenders for 1974 in the swimsuit competition. <laughs> Miss District of Columbia. Yes, she's brown-haired, brown-eyed, 20-year-old Robin Lee Butterback. Her height is 5 feet 8 inches, and she weighs 123 pounds. Miss Illinois. Set to us, Karen Morrison, 5 feet 10 and a half inches tall, and... 140 pounds. She's, she's only 19. She has blonde hair and blue eyes. Miss Nevada. Linda Dryden, 19 years old. Brown hair, brown eyes, 5 feet 6. 117 pounds, just lovely. Miss California. Yeah, 20-year-old Gail Andrea Gorell. She grew up from her baby picture, didn't she? She's 5 feet 6 inches tall. She weighs 115 pounds. Her hair's brown and her eyes are hazel. Lovely combination. Miss Wisconsin. <laughs> Mary Lynn Cook, 5 feet 8 inches tall, 120 pounds, brown eyes, brown hair, 19 years old. So pretty. Miss Missouri. Just 19 years old, Dorothy Ann McKelvin. Lovely brown hair and hazel eyes again. Five feet seven inches tall and 115 pounds. Miss South Dakota. <laughs> Yes, sir, that's 21-year-old Deborah Ann Brickley. She's 5 feet 7 inches tall, too. She weighs 122 pounds and brown hair and brown eyes to match. Miss Louisiana! Yep, another blue-eyed blonde, Karen Ann Hopp, only 19 years old. At 5 feet 11 inches, she's the tallest girl in the group. Miss North Carolina. Marsha Burton, 21 years old, with blue green eyes. Her height is 5 feet 8 inches. Her weight is 118 pounds. 
Miss Arizona. Yeah, that's Carlos Peterson. 19 years old, 5 feet 8, 117 pounds, and another lovely blue-eyed blonde. Miss New York. Five feet, eight inches tall, Barbara Cooper. She has brown hair, brown eyes, 118 pounds. Lovely. Miss Florida. Cindy Zack, five feet, six inches tall, 118 pounds, only 19 years old, with sandy hair and light brown eyes. 1974 Miss USA Swimsuit Competition. <laughs> and now, girls, would you please walk by the judges here once more so they can have another close-up look at each one of you. dead certain just where Niagara Falls is. A lot of us were, including me, until we got here. I'm going to try to help you. Right here is Lake Ontario. This is Lake Erie. Over here is the state of Michigan. And up here, Ontario, Canada. This is New York. And here's Pennsylvania, okay? Now, here's Rochester, New York. Buffalo. Erie, Pennsylvania. Cleveland, Ohio. Toledo, Ohio, and Detroit, Michigan, and right up here to Toronto, Canada, okay? Now, right here, between these two great lakes, right here, is good old Niagara Falls. The first attempt to illuminate the falls was made more than 100 years ago, and now millions enjoy the breathtaking sight. Scientists think the falls are only about, I think, 20,000 years old, which is pretty young as waterfalls go. 500,000 tons of water roar into the gorge every minute, producing more electricity than any other river in the whole world. Some of the fearless daredevils, or, or crackpots, depending on how you want to look at it, have created a pretty crazy Niagara Falls history. I'll show you some pictures of them later. Until then, Watch what happens to band practice when mom fries chicken in Crisco oil. The Miss USA family is reunited each year at pageant time, and it's always nice to welcome back some former title holders. This year, four past winners are with us. You've already met Sylvia Hitchcock Carson, who went on to become Miss Universe in 1967. Tonight, she's one of our judges. But now, I'd like to present Miss USA of 1970, Debbie Shelton. And here is Miss USA of 1971, Michelle McDonald. And also Miss USA of 1972, Tanya Wilson. <laughs> Ladies, we thank all of you for being with us again during pageant week. Now, we always save a spot during the Miss USA pageant for some entertainment by the contestants themselves. And every year it turns out to be one of the highlights of the show. Tonight, while our 12 semi-finalists are getting ready for the evening gown competition, the rest of the delegates are going to bring us a special medley of sunshine songs. It's my pleasure to introduce 39 beautiful, bright, and sunny young ladies in the 1974 Miss USA Sunshine Medley. Sunshine, let's sing a song of sunshine. You are the sunshine of my life.
the girls worked on that number and it really paid off didn't it H have you noticed how a certain contestant can grow on you each time you see her uh, the way she walks uh, a special smile of uh, you know uh, some gesture that's the way it is with the judges too with every moment they have to study the semi-finalists each judge notices a little more of something he likes or something he doesn't maybe just what would you look for if you were a judge fresh, wholesome look that's, that's typically American, or individual features that add up to something very unique. We certainly have semifinalists of every shape and size tonight, so whatever your idea of beauty is, you're sure to find at least one girl who really turns you on. Even though our official judges are celebrities or specialists in their respective fields, let's face it, when it comes to looking at beautiful girls, they have to rely on the same old equipment that you and I have, eyes, ears, and personal preference. Now, uh, let's turn our attention to your hand and this word from Ivory Liquid. Without a doubt, Without a doubt, the most elegant part of the Miss USA pageant is the evening gown competition. While we're watching our 12 semifinalists on stage here, our judges will also be seeing them on close-up television monitors. So they'll be viewing the girls just exactly as you'll see them at home on your television screens. Now, here is the 1974 Miss USA evening gown competition. This is a very important part of the judging because the girls select these gowns themselves and that gives the judges a chance to learn something about their taste and personality. Miss District of Columbia. Miss Illinois. Nevada.
Miss Wisconsin. Louisiana. Arizona. semi-finalists in tonight's evening gown competition. And now, judges, would you please mark your ballots and choose five Miss USA finalists. There's something about Niagara Falls that makes certain folks do crazy things. In 1859, a Frenchman called Blondin drank a bottle of wine and then walked across the Niagara River on a two-inch rope. Later, he encored blindfolded, then with a sack over his eyes, on a bicycle, and even pushing a wheelbarrow. Eventually, he maneuvered a cook stove to the center of the rope and cooked an omelet. Now, these dainty feet belong to Blondin's closest rival, William Hunt, alias Farini. In this contraption, he actually carried his agent across the rapids on his back. You try to find an agent like that today, huh? In 1876, Maria Spelterina, Niagara Falls' only lady rope walker, did her thing. Her feet in baskets and, get this, one trip with her head inside a paper bag. Not to be outdone by a woman, Samuel Dixon did an early hula hoop bit while walking his tightrope. Clifford Calverly went for speed and made it in 2 minutes, 32 and 2 fifths seconds, the all-time record, while thousands cheered. Just after the turn of the century, going over the falls in a barrel was a really big thing. The first lady to do it in a barrel was, was Mrs. Anna Taylor of Bay City, Michigan. 
She had a 100-pound anvil in the bottom, so her cask floated in an upright position. She later did it again with her head sticking out. Bobby Leach took to the Upper Rapids in July 25, 1911, and spent 23 weeks in the hospital recovering from his injuries. Later, in New Zealand, he slipped on a piece of orange peel and died. A total of seven people went over the falls in vehicles of various shapes, sizes, and design, but only four of them lived to talk about it. This twisted and broken barrel on which a barreler was killed is only one of the reasons that such crazy stunts were outlawed. However, on July 9, 1960, a seven-year-old boy, Roger Woodward, wearing only swim trunks and an ordinary life jacket, was swept accidentally over the Horseshoe Falls and lived to tell about it over and over and over. And you've got to admit that in comparison, streaking is a pretty tame stunt. Now, let's take a few minutes for this word about an antiperspirant made especially for women. The judges are making some very important decisions right now. Each of them must choose the five girls he or she believes are most worthy of the Miss USA title. To help them make their selections, we're going to introduce each of our semifinalists once more. Now, you've had time to talk to each girl personally, but we know what a difficult choice you have to make, judges. Maybe this final close-up look will help you mark your ballots. Here are our 12 semifinalists in the 1974 Miss USA beauty pageant. Miss District of Columbia, Robin Utterback. She's born under the sign of Taurus. A Taurus woman likes the best in everything, great art, great music, or great cooking. Miss Illinois, Karen Morrison. She's a Leo. Leos are born leaders with style, with a flair for the dramatic, and you'll usually find them as the center of attention in a room full of admiring males. Miss Nevada, Linda Dryden, she's a Scorpio. She has an intriguing sixth sense about people and is not easily deceived. She's intensely feminine, whether she's dressed in an evening gown or patched jeans. Miss California, Gail Burrell. She's a Capricorn. You can tell by her natural grace and breeding. Capricorns are good at whatever they do. They can manage a career and a home with equal aplomb. They respect the past, but keep their eyes firmly focused on the future. Miss Wisconsin, Mary Lynn Cook. Here's a Libra. This sign indicates an analytical mind and one who loves to debate any question. In addition to her intellectual qualities, she's sentimental and highly affectionate. Miss Missouri. Dorothy Ann McElveen. She's a Taurus, serene and down to earth. She can calmly meet any challenge that life has to offer. Taurus makes her decisions slowly, but once they're made, she won't easily change them. Miss South Dakota, Deborah Ann Brickley, a Scorpio. There's a touch of mystery in her sign, which helps explain her special allure. She's composed and confident with an unmistakable vitality that shines through. Miss Louisiana, Karen Ann Hall. She's a Taurus. People of this sign are even-tempered. They look for beauty and harmony in their daily surroundings. They graciously accept people as they are. Taurus is devoted to those she loves. Miss North Carolina, Marcia Burton. She's a Leo. Heads turn when this lioness glides by. Being a Leo, she may be just about to fall in love with someone and the feeling is usually mutual. A Leo is definitely a girl to be reckoned with. Miss Arizona, Carlos Peterson. Born between January 21st and February 19th, she's an Aquarius, the girl of the future. She values friendship, truth, and the right to be herself. The Aquarian girl is not tied to convention. Miss New York, Barbara Gale Cooper. 
Born between February 20th through March 20th, she's a Pisces, imaginative and creative, with a delightful sense of humor. A Pisces has a deep understanding and compassion for others. Miss Florida. Cindy Zack. This young lady is a leader. Like her symbol, the scale, she has her highs and lows, but always in the pursuit of balance and harmony. In romance, as in work, she values partnership and cooperation. And there you are, awaiting the judges' decisions, our Miss USA semifinalists for 1974. The 22 girls who have won the Miss USA crown have come from 14 states and the District of Columbia, and no one section of the country has had a monopoly on title holders. From the east, we've had winners representing New York, Vermont, Pennsylvania, and the nation's capital. They've come from four southern states, uh, Louisiana, Virginia, Florida, and South Carolina. Midwestern girls from Illinois, Iowa, and Ohio have walked off with a trophy. And in the West, winners have come from California, Utah, Washington State, and in the far, far West, Hawaii. The theory that girls from the same state can't win two years in a row was disproved when Miss Virginia inherited the title from her predecessor, who also had come from Virginia. But there's one unusual Miss USA statistic that simply can't be explained except by coincidence. In the history of the pageant, every year that ends in the number three, 1953, 1963, and 1973, has seen the top honor go to Miss Illinois. How you figure that out? Any way you look at it, women have sure changed since the first Miss USA, and so have their clothes. That's why cheers all temperature cheer. It would be impossible to expect 11 judges to have precisely the same ideas about what distinguishes one beautiful girl from another. That's why our individual voting system works so well. Each judge decides which five contestants should become finalists and marks his secret ballot. The five winners are those girls whose names appear most often on the ballots. Now, even so, if you've been keeping score of tonight's competition at home, you know how difficult it is to select five beautiful girls from 12 beautiful girls. But the ballots have been counted, and the five finalists have been chosen. And they're the only five girls who now have a chance to become Miss USA. May I have the card, please, with the names of our five finalists. Here they are, the five finalists and the four runners-up. Good luck again, girls. On the list of five finalists, we have number one, Miss California. That, ladies and gentlemen, was a look of utter joy you just saw. Finalist number two is Miss Illinois. We have our first two finalists. Now we have five finalists in all. The third name on this list is Miss New York. <laughs> Next is Miss North Carolina. Now, these four girls have a chance to become Miss USA of 1974. There is one girl remaining who also has a chance, and that girl is Miss Wisconsin. And there they are, our five contenders for the title of Miss USA of 1974. Congratulations, finalists.
now. Now this is where the tension really starts to build. We've reached the final phase of tonight's competition. We're going to ask each of these five girls the same general interest question. Her spontaneous answer will give us one more indication of her poise and her personality. Now, Miss Wisconsin, I would like to have you step over here to this microphone, if you will, please. Right over here, Miss Wisconsin, we'll put a microphone right there for you. I'd like to have you four girls step into this soundproof booth back here. Now, I'm doing this so that you four girls will not be able to hear the question and you will not hear the answer of any other contestant. Now, we'll see how five beautiful Miss USA finalists use their own individual backgrounds and experiences and their personalities to answer this same question. Now, Miss Wisconsin, the judges, as you well know, are right here. They want to hear your answer to this question. Of all the famous people of the past, who would you like to talk to and why? I would like to talk to, most of all, Frank Lloyd Wright. Because of my profession, interior design, I feel he has the most to offer to me and could tell me of all his experiences. I think the work that he has done is outstanding. Thank you. Very good, Miss Wisconsin, right over here. And may I ask you please to bring the music in the soundproof booth. We have music so that the contestants cannot possibly hear. Bring it down just a bit because I can tell that's distracting to the judges as they answer the question. Miss New York, will you step out here please? Right up here to our microphone. And Miss New York, the question that all five of you will answer for our judges is, of all the famous people of the past, who would you like to talk to and why? Uh, if it were all possible, I would love to speak to Aristotle to learn of all the philosophies of the world and understand them clearly. Thank Very you. good, Miss New York, up here. Now, Miss North Carolina, would you step out here to me, please? The judges are awaiting your answer to this same question, Miss North Carolina, which is, of all the famous people of the past, who would you like to talk to and why? I believe that of all the famous people of the past, I would like to talk to Madame Curie because I have to admire anyone that has contributed so much to humanity as far as medical research is concerned. Thank you. Thank you, Miss North Carolina. Miss California, would you join me, please? Our fourth finalist, right up here, Miss California. And the question is, of all the famous people of the past, who would you like to talk to and why? Well, I would first say I would like to speak to Jonas Salk, who invented the polio vaccine, because I feel that someone who really contributes something to the world as curing a disease so terribly drastic as polio is a magnificent person, and I envy this person and would like to just shake his hand. Thank you, Miss California. Now, Miss Illinois. Miss Illinois, right up to this microphone. The judges are here. Direct your answer to this question to them. Of all the famous people of the past, who would you like to talk to and why? I would most like to talk to Golda Meir. I feel everything she's done in the past is simply fantastic. I had the opportunity of talking to someone in Tampa one time, and they filled me in on all her background. I think she's a beautiful person, and the things she's done in the past are simply fantastic. She had a quote one time, and it said something to the effect that if it's not what the people are, it's not the people that are brought into her country that are causing war that hurts her, it's exactly what, what's felt inside of all the people in her country and their reaction that hurts her. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Illinois. And now, judges, you've heard our five finalists. The pageant is now entirely in your hands and we're all anxious to learn who is Miss USA of 1974. Throughout the past 12 months in the various state eliminations, there have been a lot of anxious moments for each of our five finalists. So, of course, waiting for the decision of judges is nothing new to them. But I think it's safe to say that right now is the time when their tension reaches a new high. 
And they're probably trying very hard not to think of the announcement that's going to be made in just a few moments. Last year, one of the finalists told me that while those last ballots were being counted, all she could think about was whether or not her cat had had her kitten. Well, what would you be thinking about if your whole life was about to take a big change for the better? Anyhow, this is your last opportunity to decide which of the girls you would vote for if you were a judge. So now's the time to take a last look at any notes you've been making and pick your winner. Oh, you'll find out if you're on target in a few moments after this important message. Now, our judges here are busy making their final decision of the evening, the decision all of us have been waiting for. While they're marking their ballots, I'd like to introduce the reigning Miss USA once again and ask her to make her traditional walk. Here is Miss USA of 1973, Amanda Jones. I am remembering last summer and the pageant in Greece and how I felt when I first saw the ruins of those ancient cities. While I felt 10 miles high because of the excitement of the Miss Universe pageant, I was brought back to Earth when I saw great stone columns over 2,000 years old and I realized how temporary all things are. I remembered a story I was told about a great conqueror who, as he rode in his golden chariot to the cheers of his people, commanded the slave who held his crown to whisper in his ear the reminder that all glory is fleeting. While my moment of glory as Miss USA is almost over, I am and always will be grateful to the people of the United States who I have the honor of representing. Most of all, it is with much love that I thank my friends who, through it all, treated me just the same as always. Thank you, Amanda Jones. Very nicely said. And now, do you have the name of the winner for me? Very good. A shout, a shout from the bleachers there, come on, New York. Well, I've just been handed the name of Miss USA of 1974, and the four runners up, a decision that all of these girls have been waiting for for many, many months. I say many, many months because they have been in pageants in their home states, earning their way here to Niagara Falls. Now, girls, I wish you all the very best of luck. The fourth runner-up for the title of Miss USA is Miss North Carolina. Congratulations, Miss North Carolina. There's your bouquet. And I hope you know, I hope, I hope you realize what a favorite you've become tonight and how many people have cheered you on. Thank you very much. Thank you, Miss North Carolina. Now, our third runner-up is Miss California. Gail, congratulations. Thank you very much. As a Californian, as a Californian myself, I am very proud to have had you back here to represent our state, and I think you have just done splendid. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, our second runner-up is Miss Wisconsin. <laughs> It's been a pleasure meeting you. It's been a pleasure meeting you, and if I need an interior designer, I'll know where to come. You sure will. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Now, girls, one of you will become Miss USA of 1974, and the other will become our first runner-up. Now, this position of first runner-up is very important because if for any reason Miss USA could not fulfill her obligation throughout the entire year, then the first runner-up would become Miss USA. The first runner-up is Miss New York. Miss Illinois is Miss USA of 1974. Congratulations.
Miss Hospitality, will you snap her banner for her here? There you are. Thank you. And her scepter, Amanda. There's your scepter. And now we have found the most beautiful girl in the USA. It is Karen Morrison here of Illinois, who will represent our country in the Miss Universe beauty pageant in Manila in the Philippines on CBS on Saturday night, July 20th, when our show will be done live by satellite. Now, Amanda, will you please read the Miss USA Creed? And Miss USA of 74, would you go out and greet your subjects? We, the young women of the United States, believe people everywhere are seeking peace, tolerance, and mutual understanding. We pledge to spread this message in every way we can, wherever we go. Thank you. And I know that there are young ladies and probably ladies and gentlemen all over our nation who would like to know something about this week and some of the things that led up to you becoming Miss USA. Just describe some of the things that have happened after you arrived here in Niagara Falls. Well, when I finally arrived... You remember she told us a story about being in New York City. Go ahead. Well, then everything went really smooth. I met a lot of wonderful girls and there was a lot behind there that a lot of people don't know of affection and I'm just I'd like to, can I thank somebody you may thank okay. anybody you wish I'd like to thank the people of Decatur Illinois for making this all possible with the Miss Illinois pageant I'd also like to thank my directors Joni and Tony Joni and Tony Joanne and Tony Salerno thank you yes <laughs> now when you start making these thanks, uh, there are some ladies oh, and gentlemen. <laughs> yes, there's some nice I ladies and gentlemen them. right I down here perhaps you'd like to thank. Thank you very much. Now who will be the first person you call when you uh, get backstage? First person I'll call? I think my roommate in Dallas, Texas. You're going to call her? Right. And then who? No, that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> is there a young man who might be very interested in the fact that you've become Miss USA? Yes. Is it? Where does well, he live? He lives in St. Charles. His name's Tom Lewis. Uh huh. And uh, do you have any plans of becoming Mrs. Tom Lewis, or is this just sort of developing right now? I'm only 19. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really? Here she is, just, just 19, and I'm rushing her into marriage. Well, you have just done so splendidly here, and all of the things that we have uh, had during the past. How did you do at the bowling? Oh, I got a trophy. Well, tell us about that. I was that. so happy. I bowled terrible. I really did. Well, how did you get a trophy? Well, it, Mr. Rump was my, he was the one that sponsored me in the bowling. And he bowled fantastic, like 190, I think. And I bowled 93. <laughs> what can I say? When you look like you do, you don't have to bowl well. Did you enjoy the parade? Oh, that was fun. All these, all the little kids were so sweet. They all rush up and want to shake your hands, and I really... I really appreciate that. That was nice. Did you go to the museum? This is the question that I must oh, ask. No. Did you go to no. the museum with Miss Nevada? Yes. Yes, you did? Would you tell no. all America what museum in Niagara Falls you visited? Oh, <laughs> it's something like the Car Carboretum. Car <laughs> Miss USA, you may have a seat in your throne right back here. You gave it the good try. There you are, the most beautiful girl in our country. Bob Barker saying good night, everyone. Well, from Miss Illinois, 
birthday, Karen Morrison, May 18th, 1974, will always be a date that changed her life. Right before our eyes, she's become an instant national celebrity. And before her year-long reign is over, she'll be one of the country's most photographed, most interviewed, and most quoted personalities. She'll sign thousands of autograph books, travel extensively and constantly, and make countless new friends wherever she goes. It will be a very educational and stimulating experience, and she seems like the kind of a girl who will make the most of it and enjoy every moment. For the other 50 contestants, it's been a week of dazzling excitement, and each of them will return home knowing she has made her family, her friends, and her state very proud of her. Remember that our new Miss Estimate from Miss USA will compete for the Miss Universe crown on Saturday, July 20th, in a special two-hour CBS telecast that will originate in the Philippines and be sent around the world by satellite. I hope you plan to be with us on that night when beautiful girls from 70 nations will take part in the Miss Universe pageant. And it's been a night of fun and surprises right here in Niagara Falls, and I'm delighted that you were here to share it with us. For Miss USA of 1974, from all of the beauty delegates to this year's pageant, and from Bob Barker and myself, thank you for joining us. We'll all look forward to being with you again on Saturday night, July the 20th. Good night. Miss USA Beauty Pageant was presented live by Crest the Cavity Fighter and all temperature cheer for the way you watch now and by Dry Formula Secret made especially for women. Join us on Saturday, July 20th for the Miss Universe Beauty Pageant live via satellite from the capital of the Philippines, Manila. And now, this is Chuck Singh saying goodnight. The musical portions were recorded. This is CBS.